where to start so here's the video i didn't plan on filming ever <laughs> uh, i haven't recorded a video in a really long time so this may be a little bit all over the place but let's get started okay so and before i begin these videos will go out afterwards so it's not gonna be like last time where i uh documented the whole process um this time i am filming kind of in the moment and then going to upload the videos later anywho <coughs> this video is all about my fifth pregnancy <laughs> my fifth pregnancy now if you've been watching my channel or you know subscribed or you know watch from time to time and all that <clears throat> you will know that i am a doula i'm a chef i'm a mama four or i was a mama four now i'm a mama five um and i have fully intended 100 percent for my last birth or my last baby to be my last baby <laughs> um i had planned on um you know not getting my tubes tied but actually getting them removed um but you know i've talked to some women who have had their tubes tied and even some who have had it removed and a lot of them don't recommend it for a lot of different reasons but one of the biggest ones that i kept seeing was that um those women experience heavier periods and cramping now even though I've had four children, uh, my periods have been pretty much ever since I started my cycle at like 12 or 13, whatever age I was, they have always been pain free. Um, I've never had like cramps or anything. And I'm not laughing because it's not funny because I know some people really deal with really extreme, um, you know, menstrual cramps, but I've never experienced that. So besides, you know, just pregnancy and being uncomfortable during that time and then labor and delivery, that's like the extent of my pain when it comes to like reproduction. So, you know, so I thought about it for a while and I thought about getting it done. And then of course it's the whole, it being a surgery thing, you know, for us as women, um, you know, and even though my last birth resulted in a C-section, I hadn't planned on it being a C-section. So I was like, okay, if I deliver vaginally, um, you know, it would be like two different procedures at once. Like you deliver vaginally, some doctors do it during like your postpartum stay, they'll do like, you know, remove your tubes or, or tie them, or, you know, you come back later on and have it done, but it still would be two separate events if you don't get a C-section. Of course, if you get a C-section, you can have it all done at once. Um, I don't know. It was just a lot of things that just made me like say no. So long story short i did not get my tubes tied or removed and i am currently pregnant so i am um um i am 14 weeks and five days so today is friday <coughs> today is friday and my weeks start over on sunday which is really cool because i always look forward to sundays anyway so that's really nice so i'm 14 weeks so i'm officially in my second trimester um again like i said it was <laughs> it was not planned um but you know god has a plan for us all <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say um so how it's been going so far you know if you can't tell it's been rough <laughs> i have had um hyperemesis for all of my pregnancies that's not something that changed this time of course, you know, everyone says pregnancies are different, babies are different, and all that stuff. But for me, that just seems like part of the territory when I'm pregnant. I will have extreme morning sickness, um, and I do. So, it really, you know, I found out <laughs> I'm pretty regular as far as, like, my cycle and everything. And it was getting, it was, I would say it's, it was back to normal by the time I, you know, got pregnant. Um that's actually another story for another day but <laughs> but anyway what i found out was the four week mark like like normal you know obviously i hadn't even really missed it yet i just was feeling a little funny a little off uh i was still breastfeeding i'm currently still breastfeeding we are working on weaning um and this has been the longest time i have breastfed a boy so that's a new like thing for me and um if it was up to me he would have been off like yesterday <laughs> but i'm really trying to be patient with him i have planned on breastfeeding pretty much as long as he wanted to um 
um, but you know, with being pregnant, that was one, one of my first signs was really sore nipples. Now, I usually get sore nipples before my cycle comes on anyway, so I just assumed it was that. But when I say sore nipples, uh, PMS versus pregnancy, night and day. So I kind of knew at the back of my mind that it could be pregnancy, but I was just trying to brush it off. I was like, no, of course not. But it really was because it was so bad. Every time he latched, it hurt so bad. Almost as if like he was a newborn again. And he did have like a slight tongue tie. So we had that as like a problem. Or, you know, it just caused me a little pain and discomfort in the beginning of our breastfeeding journey until, you know, his mouth got a little bit bigger. And then it wasn't really an issue. But, yeah, breastfeeding was my first sign. Well, sore nipples was my first sign. As with all of my pregnancies, really, except for my first pregnancy, because I really didn't know, you know, what to look for and things like that. But for literally each and every one of them, the first sign before I missed a period before I have any like I always also get like a pull or a tug like I could feel my eggs release it usually happens like a day or two before my period and I did not feel that this time either but you know sometimes you feel like a little twinge or something you're like oh that was it but I knew it wasn't like a strong enough pull for me to say yeah that was my egg releasing so that didn't happen had the sore nipples and I was like I'm just gonna take the test just to <laughs> ease my mind right Man, I took the test and it changed so fast. <laughs> so that was like literally the four week mark or, you know, you count your pregnancy from your last menstrual, you count the first day of your pregnancy from your last menstrual cycle, last menstrual period or whatever. Um, so yeah, so that's when I found out. <clears throat> and of course, I had the two week grace period where I was like, I knew I was pregnant, but I wasn't having any other symptoms besides the sore nipples. Um, but then a morning sickness came and it has not left. Um, it's, it's just really bad for me. It's like, you know, all day nausea from the moment I wake up until the moment I go to sleep. And then so a lot of times I just want to sleep because that's the only time I don't feel nauseous. Obviously, with four little kids running around, I cannot do that. Like I could in my first pregnancy. It was so much easier to just sleep away <laughs> the nausea. Um, so it was harder. Um and and yeah mostly basically it's like throwing up two to three times a week um sometimes in those you know days it's like multiple times a day so it's really hard to eat it's really hard to keep down like fluid and all that stuff so i get you know dehydrated really easily um so like i said i'm 14 weeks and i do still have nausea like i'm nauseous right now i just ate lunch um, and lunch, like I said, is always so hard for me for lunch because I guess I'm not really a lunch person. Like, I don't really like a lot of lunch options besides quesadillas. Like, <laughs> I could eat a quesadilla every single day with sour cream and salsa. It's like one of my favorite lunch things. Um, but, you know, when you're pregnant, your taste buds change. So even certain things that I did like to eat for lunch, um, I don't now. And then there's other things that I do like to eat, but they're not hefty enough. Like, they won't hold me. Um, and then that adds to my nausea as well. So I really, really, really love salads. Like I would eat that for lunch or whatever. And like, you know, really deck it out, add eggs and, um, you know, I'm not really a chicken person when it comes to salad, but like seafood and stuff like that to make it as hearty as I could, but it's not heavy enough during pregnancy for me. So if I eat a salad as just my lunch, even if I had seafood mixed in uh, with it, it will make me throw up because it's too light. So it's really hard just trying to find stuff that is um um that is heavy enough but not too heavy and then stuff that the baby likes because this baby <laughs> does not like sweet stuff it is absolutely insane and <laughs> okay well i might as well talk about this now and that's one of the reasons why i believe i'm having a girl because for all of my boys i crave nothing but sweets like give me all the sweets i need the sweets i'm going to eat all the sweets i see of course you know I i'm i'm temperate when it comes to food so i'm not like a gluttonous whatever eat all the sweets but you know what i'm saying like that was my main uh craving was sweets like oh my gosh give them to me um but this time around Mm -mm. sweets no make me throw up instantly so no cakes no cookies no ice cream no milkshakes no yogurt i'm getting mad just thinking about it <laughs> like i can't eat sweets which makes me so upset because because when i'm breastfeeding my boys 
again, the sweets cravings just carry over to my breastfeeding. So I started to notice that I wasn't craving sweets while I was breastfeeding. Like I said, I'm still breastfeeding. And then again, whenever I would eat sweets, it would make me nauseous. So like for me, like my perfect favorite snack would be like coffee and donuts. I love the Intamin's Rich Frosted Donuts. And then if I was like ordering something from uh, Dunkin' Donuts, I always got the old fashioned, is it called old fashioned? Or the glazed donuts, like a coffee, two glazed donuts. That was like my pick me up. That's my afternoon snack. It's just something that I loved, especially with my coffee. And no, no, no. So no sweets. Sweets are out. <laughs> it's all about the savory. I love anything savory, anything like warm, um, savory, not like too, too salty, but it does have to have salt in it. Um, so yeah, I'm really sad for me about this sweet thing. And <laughs> that is so different um, from my three previous pregnancies because I love the sweets. I loved ice cream. I love, you know, like muffins and danishes and 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 brownies and cookies like <laughs> that was my stuff i remember with matthias i had to have i didn't have to have it okay but i love to have like a um, strawberry milkshake now before i had matthias or before i got pregnant with him i wasn't really a milkshake really kind of person but there was a Wawa like right by the house where I lived at that time and every other night I had to have one like <laughs> it was so good um and I kind of enjoyed it with my third pregnancy with Kenzo I had a couple maybe with my fourth pregnancy um but again like I said I just I love the sweets but this time I cannot have the sweets <laughs> and so that really does suck I try every now and again to eat sweets and it comes up instantly so it's like I'm not even gonna bother because at this point I need my food to stay down because throwing up is not fun so anywho um what else coffee <sighs> my beloved coffee and this has been a thing for all of my pregnancies besides my first which is really funny um, so when I got pregnant with my first, I had actually given up coffee. I wasn't drinking coffee at that time for maybe like three months or so, um, because I was on my health kick and I was like, I don't want caffeine in my system. It's a, a stimulant and all that stuff. So I wasn't even drinking coffee at the time that I got pregnant with Celia, but I had morning sickness so bad and I was just trying all these things. And I think I looked up, you know, caffeine and whatever, or coffee. And I think it was recommended for morning sickness. So I tried it and it did work. Now, at that time, I worked at Starbucks. So coffee was just always available to me anyway. Um, and I could keep down like a latte or something like that. So that was really cool. Um, and that was the only pregnancy where I was able to drink coffee throughout the whole entire pregnancy. And it didn't bother me. Um, for Matthias, I kind of had an aversion to it at first. But between like, I don't know, week 16 on, I was able to drink coffee. No problems um for kenzo same thing i wasn't able to drink it at first i started you know it just started to taste funny or whatever it smelled funny um so then i just stayed away from it in the beginning and then i could go back to it and i usually like like um iced coffee with kenzo's pregnancy um and then with asa's pregnancy um kind of the same thing happened in the beginning um, and I tried to reintroduce the coffee when I thought that it was okay for my body, but it really never, that never really happened. Um, and I had a couple of episodes where I was like really, uh, I felt like really faint and my heart was racing and things like that. And it's not like I was drinking an excessive amount of coffee. It was a cup or whatever. Um, and the last episode I had was like during my birthday when I had like some really nice, fresh Italian, um, Italian espresso iced coffee. And it tore me up like i had to see a cardiologist it was just this whole big thing so i just stayed off of the coffee for the whole rest of the pregnancy and it kind of reintroduced coffee you know once i delivered um this time around it's looking like the same thing it's not really that i'm having any adverse um reactions or anything to the coffee like it doesn't make me throw up or anything but i have noticed that the smell kind of makes my stomach upset like i can drink it and it tastes good while i'm drinking it but i'm but then after I'm done drinking it, I just kind of feel like, mm, no, like it just doesn't feel good in my stomach or whatever. Like I said, it hasn't made me throw up. Um, and usually in the morning, I'm fine. Like breakfast stays down really, really fine for me. So it's usually okay if I, well, not was drinking it in the morning with my breakfast. But um, 
no i have had to eliminate that as well hot coffee is worse than a cold coffee but i made myself a cup of uh cold coffee like it was weeks ago now because i haven't even tried it since then but as i was drinking it it just it just wasn't feeling right for my body so i really do try to listen to my body and you know what the baby wants me to do um and try not to go against it because again with the morning sickness i know i'm already so much behind with <laughs> you know hydration and nutrients and stuff like that because i'm throwing up so much so i try not to exacerbate that issue so if something doesn't feel right then i just stop eating it totally um and again like i said same thing with the sweets i'm just not even <laughs> every now and again i try i really do like i had an oreo or two and i was like oh this tastes good but then the baby was like no it doesn't so <laughs> um so i really feel for me this is gonna be hard because i have been eating sweets and i stopped for like what four years or so since i was pregnant with matthias because i've had boy after boy after boy so i just i just feel like it has to be a girl because with saya i don't remember craving sweets like i feel like for the most part i did just like savory things and i was pregnant with her most of like winter and fall so of course you have all the chili and soups and paninis and sandwiches and all that stuff like that's my stuff so that seems to be the same thing that i'm craving at this time um so and then that's everything about the cravings um let me see is there anything else that i'm craving or not cra oh my gosh i have to mention this but chicken Whew. i cannot i cannot do chicken i can't do it oh my gosh i made my kids so we've been eating a lot of chicken one because it's easy to make it's usually almost always good like it's kind of hard to make chicken bad you know what i mean like to mess up chicken and it's cheap so that was like my shoe in for our dinners and the kids love chicken right so we've been doing the cornish hens if you've seen that we've done a lot of different chicken like a baked chicken i've fried chicken i've air fried chicken we've been doing so many things with chicken but let me tell you oh and chicken thighs that's like my favorite thing you know saute them in the pan and then put whatever seasoning you want and i usually finish it um, in the oven like bake it in the oven the kids love it they go crazy but i i can't do it i cannot do it the last time i made chicken i almost threw up while i was making it <laughs> i almost threw up while it was cooking because i could smell it you know cooking in the oven i'm opening all the windows and the doors it's not doing a thing and i'm like keep it down tashima keep it down you know because i'm just trying to keep food down like keep food in my stomach right um, and then as the kids were eating it for dinner, I almost threw up. My brothers had some as well. And I'm like, please, everybody just eat all this chicken. <laughs> so I don't even have to see it or smell it. Um, they ate it within about two days or so. And then the pan just sat there. Like, I didn't know what to do there because the pan was there. Um, I did put it in my, <laughs> I put it in the stove because I was like, I don't know what to do with this chicken because it still had like, you know, the fond on the bottom or whatever. So I dumped that out but um i couldn't touch it for a really long time because of the smell i was just i was like i don't want to throw up it was so so hard and i was like what am i gonna do because i have to be the one to wash it so at one point i put it outside like i sprayed it down and i put it outside um until i was <laughs> mentally i guess able to wash the pan and you know i sprayed it down and i put like you know some um spray cleaner on it and then i put it into the dishwasher um still had like a couple of little stains on there but at least the smell was gone and then i was able to hand wash it it took me and i'm ashamed to say this it took me two weeks <laughs> it took me two whole weeks to get that that chicken pan cleaned and that is the last time I cook chicken. And it's going to be the last time I cook chicken the rest of this pregnancy. Like, I can't. So, for reference, today is what? May? No, it's not. Oh, my gosh. It's April 28th? 29th? Something like that. May? May. April 28th. Um, and, my <coughs> and my due date is October 23rd. Um, so I feel sorry for the kids, but no chicken. Chicken is out until then <laughs> because this, it has been my biggest trigger. Even like it being cold, like, you know, cause usually things, foods don't really smell too much when they're cold, but even cold, I can't, I can't like look at it. I just, oh, it's so disgusting. <laughs> and that's really funny is because I loved chicken prior to getting pregnant, you know, um, um, and actually that's another thing that's another big indicator that i'm having a girl because 
for my first pregnancy i was vegetarian so i was vegetarian for like eight years um i was vegan first and then i switched to vegetarian and i stayed that way until my second pregnancy so my whole first pregnancy while i carried say i did not know her gender at the time um we waited until she was born but i was able to you know stay vegetarian and the whole time i breastfed her i was vegetarian um i only started eating meat when i was pregnant with my second and nothing was staying down and <laughs> i was just like I don't know like my siblings and everybody was ordering chicken and it always smelled good when they came in the house with it so i was like okay if it smells so good then maybe i should be eating it maybe my body maybe this baby agrees with it um and then so you know i ate it i ate the chicken wings or whatever and it tasted really good on my stomach like it felt really good and it stayed down so really ever since then ever since then since i was pregnant with matthias i have been a meat eater so it's really 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 funny that this time around i can't eat the chicken like the one thing that made me start eating meat again i can't eat i can't eat um i'm able to eat um like sausage breakfast sausage is usually like one of the things that doesn't upset my stomach at all um i can eat like meatballs and what else um, it, it seems like mostly like red meat. I mean, of course, I'm still eating seafood. I'm still eating salmon. I still love that. Um, and like shrimp and like crab, crab cakes, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, chicken is completely out. <laughs> I will not be touching chicken no more um, for this pregnancy. Um, so is there anything else? I don't have the light sensitivity that i did last time lighting is okay it's actually like really uh cloudy and rainy outside right now so it's a little bit dark but even if it was brighter it, it's, it hasn't been an issue for me um as far as motion sickness like it's not that bad like it's not as bad as it was last time like last time was really extreme to the point where i just stayed in the house because i couldn't be in a car because every time I went somewhere in a car, when I got to my destination, I had to throw up. So this time has been better. I actually just went on a road trip uh, earlier this month and it wasn't that bad, but it was kind of getting there towards the end. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's, it's, the nausea really is like the hardest part. I mean, now that I'm in my second trimester, the sleepiness is going away a little bit, <laughs> but I'm still behind on sleep anyway, just because of like the years of breastfeeding and all of that. So, so I'm still not getting like as much sleep as I feel like I should be getting, but you know, Ace is sleeping um, longer stretches at night now. He sleeps from about seven, seven o'clock to about six. He'll sleep before he needs to nurse again. So that's really good. But you know, um, sometimes other kids wake up or you know, I'm waking up all night to go to the bathroom. It is literally atrocious. <laughs> and I was telling my mom, like I haven't, I don't remember experiencing this so early in the pregnancy. Like usually at the end, of course, you have to use the bathroom all the time just because baby's so big and it's putting all that pressure on your bladder. In the beginning, you do have to use the bathroom a lot due to hormones, but I pretty much go to the bathroom every two to three hours at night. Yeah, <laughs> pretty faithfully, no matter what I drunk or what time I stopped drinking, it doesn't matter. And I cannot go back to sleep or get back to sleep unless I <laughs> empty my bladder. So that's annoying because then I have to go all the way downstairs to use the bathroom. Um, and I don't see that changing any time this pregnancy. So... So yeah, sleep uninterrupted, sleep interrupted all the time. Um, and then sometimes, again, it's hard for me to like fall right back again uh, to sleep. So you see how these issues are piling on each other. <laughs> um, what else? Um, so let's talk about appointments, birth, everything like that. Okay, I do plan on finding out the gender this time around just because um, um, it was offered to me at my appointment and I'm like, hey, sure, if it's offered, I'm going to do it. I only had it done once and that was for Matthias. So it's, I think it's called, what is it called? The NIPT test and it checks for like Down syndrome, 
something something 13 i don't want to say it wrong and then <laughs> it's something with a t trigger something 13 whatever something like that but anyway the only reason why i get the test done is to find a gender i don't really worry about anything else because i'm like you know i know god got me for that but um so yeah uh I got that done. I mean, my my uh, doctors offered that and I decided to get that done because I just feel like that's so much safer than waiting for the anatomy scan for them to tell you. And I just really don't trust that it's gonna be like the right thing when they look. So I love the blood test because it's like 99, 99.9% .9 accurate because they can test mom's blood and see if she has testosterone in her blood. And then if she does, obviously she's carrying a boy and if she doesn't, she's carrying a girl. So I was team green for all my other pregnancies, but Matthias and this one. Um, what else? So I do plan on delivering vaginally. Um, and I do know that with me having two cesareans already, a lot of doctors, a lot of people are just like, no, that's their cutoff. Like one C-section is their cutoff. And I still have pushback for my first C-sections, but this time around, I I probably would have even more um but that's my plan <laughs> and um and I am preparing myself for that so you know I did do my research to see just to see if I could find someone that was you know supportive of a VBAC after two c-sections and everywhere that I called and looked and researched or that people recommended to me none of them none of them did VBACs after two c-sections there was a couple that i found in the state of new jersey kind of further away you know than where i live and i wasn't like you know against traveling further but the main thing was that they don't take insurance or they don't take my insurance and so i was like well i'm not paying out of pocket if i have insurance that will cover my delivery i just have to go to you know whoever covers my whoever you know accepts my insurance basically so what I decided to do, because it really was stressing me out, like I called around for weeks, maybe a month, maybe even two months, you know, and it was just like dead end after dead end after dead end. I found a couple of birthday centers that said, yeah, we do it, or that we do VBACs, but they don't do, you know, if you've had two, and then a couple of places that said, yeah, we do it, but we don't take your insurance. So it was like, I can never find someone that did both, you know? Um, but I'm really not that concerned about it. I'm really not. Because I know how to speak up for myself and I know how to say no. Like, I'm not going to allow anyone to force me to do something that I don't want to do. So, but what I did do though, and I had really good experiences at the OB practice that I was at. But I switched to a different location. So, it's the same OB practice, but it's a different location. So, it's a whole new group, a whole new set, a whole new set of um, obstetricians. Um... And I just wanted to try something different, try something new. And mainly, <laughs> the main reason why I switched um, is because I want to deliver at that hospital. So I've delivered all my babies at Virtual Memorial, not too far from me, like 15, 20 minutes tops. Um, and like I said, I had good experiences, but there were a few OBs that I really didn't like. And the main one that was head or in charge of everything that's the one that rubbed me the wrong way the most my last pregnancy and just stressed me out so bad at the end um and i was like no i absolutely cannot do that again i know she's still gonna be like over everything um and i was like nope i'm not even walking into that so i switched my ob practice to Voorhees, um and i had my first appointment at 12 weeks now normally i would have it at eight weeks but it was really hard to, well, once I finally decided on someone um, to get in and get scheduled, it was a whole month out from when I scheduled it. But I was fine with that because I'm like, okay, I really want this pregnancy or like, I just really want everything to be hands off as much as possible. So I was fine with missing that first appointment. I was like, it's really not too much going on anyway. Like normally I would go in, they do the pap smear, they do the date and ultrasound. And at that time, baby's still so small. So I usually had to get the transvaginal and then you have to drink 16 to 32 ounces of water and then hold your bladder and then it goes up, you know, your hoo-ha and it's just, ugh, I was not in the mood for all of that. So I was like, I don't mind it being at 12 weeks. Um, so I had that 12 weeks with the APN and usually I'm going to be with the APN until pretty much towards the end. That's really 
really when they start bringing the obstetrician in, which I'm fine with that as well. I actually had a client who went to this location and the moment I walked in there, I absolutely loved it. So I'm really, really, really glad, really grateful that they take my insurance. They seem to be a nice group of people, but of course things, you know, they always kind of change up at the end when it's crunch time. It's like when you really need them to act right the most. Anyway, I'm all over the place now. Let me go back. I had my first prenatal appointment. I really liked the lady who did my appointment. Um, she was nice. She was very thorough. She asked me questions. If I said no about something, she didn't try to force me or pressure me. So, like, one of the things, obviously, is a baby aspirin. I'm not taking that. Declined it all three times, and I will this this time, too. So, that's as a precaution for preeclampsia, which, you know, I did have for my first pregnancy. Um, we talked about a couple other things. We went over all my history. Um, of course uh she let me know that the delivery would be a c-section and i just smiled and said mm -hmm, because this is where i am right now i don't need to rock the boat let them think what they want to think let them think they're going to do what they want to do schedule me hey i do not care i'm walking up in there when i'm ready to have the baby now <laughs> i have had for both of my vaginal births um, I believe they were successful because I allowed labor to start on its own or, you know, you know, labor started on its own. Let's just say that. So, and, and I don't have a problem with like laboring at home as long as possible because I know I can endure the pain. Like I've never had an epidural, so I didn't, um, that's not like a factor for me to rush and say, I got to go to the hospital because I need pain relief. I know that I can do it without one. Um, and so that's my plan, <laughs> basically, in a nutshell, is to stay home as long as possible, allow labor to start on its own, or even my water to break or whatever, um, and stay at home until I feel like I absolutely cannot, like I know the feeling of transition, I know the feeling of like that, that point or that place in your body where your body is pushing on its own, like I know all those sensations, so I would try to get to the hospital before then. Honestly, if I'm being 100% honest, I would love nothing more than a home birth. Like, I would love to just deliver the baby here at home with my mom and my sisters around me. Um, and to me, that would be like a dream come true. I'm kind of, like, I really want to say I'm 100% for it. Um, but I have to be realistic, too. I know I have risk factors. And the main biggest thing, to me, is not really even my c-section like i'm not really concerned about that at all at all i'm not concerned about rupturing i know doctors and people try to scare you with those statistics but your chances are one to two percent and well two percent in my case because i've had two c-sections but that's not my biggest thing my biggest thing for myself is my blood pressure so with saya i definitely was diagnosed with preeclampsia at 33 weeks so that came sudden out of nowhere really 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 uh really bad um, and then with Matthias, my blood pressure started going up in the course of labor. Um, and then I was put on magnesium and then, you know, I had to stay on it 24 hours after birth. So that's the main thing that's kind of making me, I guess, afraid. I have to use that word, but no, not afraid, but leery of delivering at home. And the other reason is I don't have a midwife either. Now, you know, my mom's my doula. She's an RN and I completely trust her, but she's not specifically trained in obstetrics and i know she would be uncomfortable with it and sometimes i just be you know uh playing with her joking with her like we're gonna have this baby at home so i need you to learn your stuff get on everything you need to learn and to learn how to check for dilation so you can deliver this baby um i'm half joking but serious at the same time but of course, at the end of the day, I want me to be safe, the baby to be safe, and whoever is here to feel comfortable. Like, if they don't feel comfortable, then it probably would have a negative outcome anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, I really wish that I had a midwife that I trusted um, and that took my insurance <laughs> that would deliver here at the home. Then I would feel, like, 100% better about it, but I don't know anyone, um, and, you know... <sighs> It's just really, it's really tough. I really want a home birth. But, so, anywho, my plan is, we'll just get a little long, so let's let's wrap it up. But my plan is to labor home as long as possible, praying and hoping and praying that God would just bless my body to go into labor 
um, on his own, again, as he has in the past, so I don't doubt that. And I really think, this is a little side, but if I really think that if I had waited a little bit for my last birth, my body would have went into labor on its own, like if I had just waited, you know, and then it would have, things would have been better. But, um, but yeah, that's my plan this time. So, you know, I have my appointment scheduled. I actually was not able to schedule my 16 week appointment because at this point, um, you're meeting with your doctor once a month or you're meeting with your practice once a month. Um, and I had to run out of there last time. Um, so by the time I called like a week or so later, they didn't have anything like in my time frame for that one month. So they were trying to fit me in either like earlier or a little bit later. Um, and I also have, you know, appointments with maternal fetal medicine. Um, I have a consult with them coming up. So I'm going to go to that just to kind of fill the room. I need to know all the people who are going to be like a part of my care team. Um, I thought about like just totally <laughs> uh, canceling that appointment because like I said, I want this to be hands off. I don't want anyone trying to scare me about stuff and statistics and this and this is a risk factor and all that stuff. Like I don't need to hear that. I'm not interested. Um, so like I said, though, because this is a new group, you know, of physicians and everything, I'm going to meet with them just so I can see them and they can see me. So I'll go to a consult, which is another, I think, ultrasound, which is always fun to see a baby or whatever. And then, um, and then I'll go from there about how often I'll go to maternal fetal medicine, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself or feel like I have to go to all these appointments and all that stuff because I'm just not <laughs> so so we'll go from there like I said I did miss I did I just skipped totally that 16 week appointment um and like I said it's because I had my consult like so close to when they were trying to schedule me I was like I'm not doing both and within a week's time of each other like it just seems silly to me so I'm going to the consult but I skipped the appointment and then I'll have my regular appointment at 20 weeks and then I'll also have my anatomy scan at 20 weeks so 16 weeks and no, I'm sorry, 18 weeks is when I have the consult, 20 weeks is when I'll have my anatomy scan. Um, and then anything else? <laughs> of course, my mom's my doula, I said that already. And uh, that, actually, I think that's it. <laughs> I think I went over everything for this pregnancy so far. I'm not sure how often I'll do these videos. I don't know, I guess. <clears throat> excuse me maybe the next time I do one maybe it'll be after the anatomy scan because that's a really thorough uh ultrasound and you get to see everything now they did do a really thorough one um when I had the the testing for the nuchal fold the NIPT test they did do a really thorough one there too and got to see pretty much everything because like I said I'm further along in the pregnancy than previous pregnancies where you weren't able to see as much you know as early on so so that was really cool and of course it's always fun to hear your baby's heartbeat for the first time um and the baby's heartbeat was like 150 so that's kind of borderline for my boys their heartbeats were really not really low but on the lower end and sales was always always high like always 160 always 170 um so 150 though is middle ground like i remember kenzo's <coughs> kenzo asa maybe asa no, Kenzo. Kenzo's um, heart rate was mostly, for the most part, like 150. So I wasn't really sure with him. I was sure because of my symptoms or, you know, because of my how my pregnancy felt with my body, like that that was a boy pregnancy and I was right. Um, but I didn't know his gender until he was born either. And he was consistently like 150. So it could go either way right now. It could be boy or it could be girl. Um, so yeah, so I guess that's all for this video. I gotta get downstairs and make dinner and all that stuff. <sighs> Motherhood, the joys. <laughs> but um, yeah, I plan to update after the anatomy scan and then maybe once I'm in my third trimester, somewhere around there. Um, there's a couple of things that I know I wanna do this pregnancy, so stay tuned for that. So hopefully I can get around to making these videos. And like I said, I will release these videos after the baby is born. So I feel like it would be really fun to look back on and see. At this time, um, I'm taking a break from social media um, for my mental health. Um, and so, so yeah, I'm just recording these for later. Um, 
and of course as much as i can as much as possible i will do the birth vlog delivery um birth stories you know all that fun stuff i'm so excited i'm really excited um yeah wasn't planned but i'm totally excited so that is all i'm gonna say for this video <laughs> i hope that you enjoyed all this rambling you know i'd be rambling when i'd be pregnant i'd just be talking and talking and talking and i'm staying outside because i love the rain <laughs> and i'm sitting right by the window <laughs> but anywho let me get downstairs to these kids i hope that you enjoyed it i hope you're having a good day or a good week whenever this video comes out i don't know um yeah that's all thank you bye <laughs>